It's a cold Sunday November morning and we are standing by Mother Thames. Well, it's worth it because we're about to explore one of the greatest civil engineering masterpieces that London has. We're going to visit the world's first underwater tunnel. Inspired by a shipworm, today we're at the Thames Tunnel. In this week's episode. Somebody should make a movie about this actually, it'd be really good. We should be in it. Yeah. So the idea was to create effectively a freight tunnel. This structure that is 180 years old is still being used every day. And we like taking you with us. Now, we're going to go down there, are we? Just park that for a second and just marvel in the wonder that this is. Well, hello. From a very desolate riverbank here it's on the quite river. Grey, isn't it? It, today. Does. it really looks very odd, but we are here for an incredibly special reason. And I think we're all quite excited about today because we're taking you on a tour of something that you so seldom get the chance to explore. And it is, of course, Siddles. Mm, it's the Thames Tunnel or the Brunel Tunnel tours that we've partnered up with the London Overground to run this weekend with Hidden London. It's gorgeous stuff. Now, this is, uh, it was a, a, an engineering masterpiece, wasn't it, really? And it was done uh, in a very pioneering way by a very, very clever man and his interestingly named son. Hmm. It, it was a, a feat of engineering, it's yeah. the only way to describe it. Um, people had tried to do this kind of thing before and failed. Yeah. And uh, it took many years before this wasn't a failure as well. There's a, a, you know, people died, uh, achieved this engineering wonder mm. um, but it was actually inspired by something quite simple the solution to building this tunnel was ultimately creating the first tunneling shield that was successful enough to build the tunnel without it collapsing but that was inspired by something not very far away from us mm. which was ships right ships ships now Give us a year when this was all being thought about. What, what put us in this place? Which generation? Which year? So we're in the early 1800s wow. when this is being conceived of. Okay, so we're at a time when this is being thought about. You've got the first horse buses uh, are, are, are going out onto London streets. You know, public transport is really in its infancy, and the ability to get from here to the other side of the river is still a really important thing. Hmm. Um, and know. pretty much here, the only way you could do it was by a barge or a ship because the Waterman's Guild of London was very strong and the nearest bridge to here is London Bridge because of course Tower Bridge hadn't been built yet. So it was a really big obstacle for people here to be able to travel between the north and the south bank of the River Thames. So, so the idea was to create effectively a freight tunnel where horses and carriages could go from one side of the Thames to the other without having to try and build a bridge here. Right, now there's obviously some science in this. Mm. Um, I'm thinking classroom science lessons we need a lesson in this. It's teacher vibes. How, yes. And there's only one of us who was a teacher in a former life. Mm. Uh, I, I can feel a costume change. Are you ready, on. love? Oh. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Oh, look at you. Uh, Is that sale or return, by the way? <laughs> I don't even know if you're even eyeing that, have you? Well, indeed. Nobody will notice if I slide it back in the bag. Uh, oh, well, I'll pop it back in the bag and send it back. Uh, so, pay attention. Uh, here's what we have. Uh, we have a this. little bit of uh, faux show. Sludge. Faux show. Faux show. Um, so we have some ground here. What we're going to do... It's a flapjack now. <laughs> oh, you want to sample that? Now, here's the idea that uh, Brunel had. He looked at the teredo worm, shipworm, which burrows into the timbers, because of course ships were made of, of wood back then. Um, they would burrow in and they would create a shell around themselves in the wood. Right? Now, this is the idea of creating protection in which miners can dig without the ground collapsing on them. It's your hoover missing apart them. <laughs> it's a bit of bit of uh, bit of utility pipe. And where the idea originally came from was a thing that was used all the time for building bridges called a caisson, where by pushing down, basically weighting a usually a steel pile of bricks, pile of bricks, pile yeah, of bricks. Or indeed by flooding compartments on the top of it, it'll push down 
right? You've got the ground inside, and then they can come along with their teaspoon, sorry, spades, and dig out. It's a bit like a pastry cutter, yeah. the way a pastry cutter would work. Right. So you're basically... Feel, always love the food analogies. <laughs> It's, it's a, a running theme. Cutter. We've had flapjack and pastry, yeah. that's not what I'm gleaning So basically, that moment. massive spoon yeah. is like the work of about hundreds of men. Yeah, so if you yeah. imagine this has got water all around it as well, so it's yeah. keeping the water out, it allows you to dig down and put concrete in and make foundations down there for a bridge pier. Now, that's a great idea, and that was well understood. Okay. Well done, Ooh. look at that. <laughs> Of course, if that had water in it, it would all just flood straight in. Yeah, without that there. Okay. Yep. Sink in. Yeah. Like that yeah. Exactly. It would just yeah. flow in. If you dig your if you dig your pit too close to the 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 water on the seaside, it all flows in. Yeah. However, now let's take that idea. That's vertical. <laughs> and if we hold my, I will hold your spoon. If we now turn it that way up. Wait, what? How is he going to do that? Ooh, now, look at that! Just pop this on the ground. I okay. have to say, this is clever. He's thought about this. What, so, Brunel? <laughs> imagine, imagine that you're now trying to go horizontally through this. Christopher Kingdom, Brunel. Well, the idea still works, doesn't it? So this is a tunnelling shield at work. Fine, may borrow the spoon. Spade. Scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> look at that! So essentially, this is the genius of using a tunnelling shield, is that you can dig out the tunnel, line inside that, and then push on in front. And then fill behind it. And then fill behind it. <sighs> okay, so basically you just keep on pushing that in, and as long as you line your tunnel with bricks or cast iron or nowadays concrete, eventually your shield comes out the other side and you are left with a lining oh. which will hold it up. But you see, without that there, this is what you get. You get a collapse. Oh, too. see, look at that. Okay? So it just falls in without that to support it temporarily while you build your shield. And that is the genius of the Brunels and why the world's first underwater tunnel. Now, girls, I have to tell you this, right? I think we'd had a few when we came up with this idea. <laughs> I did not like expect it. it to be as good as this. This you have surpassed yourself, you Mr. Nix. Thank you very much for, the, for that physics lesson. And I, re I gather as well that when they were building this, that ca caisson, caisson that yeah. kept going down got stuck. And so they had to weight it even more. Yeah, so depending on what the, the ground is underneath in the riverbed would depend on how well it would go down. You can imagine if it encounters rocks or mm. buried that hard matter uh, in different strata as it goes down, it could be, could be very difficult. And also with the caisson, um, you, would, you would sink it by flooding it and then they would have a compartment in it which allowed the, the miners to work down at the bottom under pressure yeah. Uh, keeping the water out of it while still having flooded compartments above it to push it down. So absolutely. Complicated stuff. Yeah, and absolutely the worst job ever. Because <laughs> you could get the bends. Because yeah. they would have you under pressure. So, I mean, you've done a lot of scuba diving, right? So you Indeed. know all about the safety of going up slowly and that sort of thing. Yeah, you've got, you've got to wait it out, otherwise it's uh, game over. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, this sounds very complicated. I mean, the, the, the sheer tenacity of that they just kept going. Yeah. Mm. Is incredible, right? Yeah. Young innocents. <laughs> That's what they were. Energy. <laughs> they didn't have mortgages to worry More about, energy. did they? More energy. More energy. <laughs> it's all no, good. Like every obstacle just yeah. kind of worked through it. Yeah. Big tunnel Logically. energy, in fact. Big tunnel, Big tunnel energy. energy. Well, look, I, I, I mean, I'd love you to stay looking like that, but mm. I figure we need to sort of dress in a more it's sort cold, of industrial colour. It's cold, and I'm kind colour. of glad to put some more layers on, so... And yeah. I kind of feel like the... The master of ceremonies is actually downstairs, isn't yeah. it? It's the tunnel. So I think we need well, to get down there, don't we? I think we've scienced the shizzle out of that <laughs> one. So um, should we head in? Yeah, yeah. you've not Do left we, one mark gonna, on it. Are you going to go from um, <laughs> scientist to superman? I'm going to go <laughs> from <laughs> scientist to, to tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> so then, Nixie, you've swapped your white coat for a lovely high-vis. In fact, we're all Museum dressed so beautifully in these yeah. to arrive, lovely ladies as well, at this stunning plaque. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this. 
So this plaque was installed in 1995 um, by the International Society of Civil Engineers because recognising it is one of the most important structures in civil engineering in the world. So it's um, yeah, just, just it basically says that it's the American Society and the International Society. Wow. So this is before uh, it got turned into the overground, but we'll get to all of that stuff. In it's gorgeous. Or even it got turned into the underground. Yeah. Uh, Escalators just oh, turned yes. on. That's quite scary, isn't it? When <laughs> oh, the yeah. station comes to life in front of you. So we're what? here early because Very the tours early. are going to be starting yeah. soon. So day two, day one was a roaring success, but uh, yeah. We're getting our first glimpse of what separates this from a lot of the deep tube underground, which is brick. It's We're going to be seeing tunnels mm -hmm. in brick. Yeah. which is uh, somewhat unusual. Yeah, cool. aesthetically it's obviously very different, but it gives you a different feel as well. Yeah, it is beautiful. Well, let's get down there because this what? is the, the star of the show is down there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's go. Well, this does my heart good, seeing a blockade with a hidden London. Mm. <laughs> How did you get them to do that? I we mean, asked you know, <laughs> knowing really the right good. people. Well, obviously, oh, we're, no. we're only allowed down here I because mean, of the blockade, which doesn't happen that often. And can I just say, this is a blockade. You couldn't get well, a train yeah. through here. This has all been made for the tours, just yep. for yeah. us. Yep. And it's also part of the reason why we're not in like full PPE to do this. We're in kind of PPE light ish mm -hmm. to be able to do this. And it's why we're able to take members, the of, the members of the public without a whole like full rig of uh, possession. Mm. Uh, full PPE rig and I'm going to take the opportunity to do something which ordinarily if you were taking this shot you'd be in a world of pain yeah. <laughs> but why not oh, since we're here. you send that to me because I've got gloves on it's yeah. very cold right over his head this one of the wrong. things that you'll notice as we go down guys is you see there are, there are a couple of bits where you might trip over yeah they've all been painted yellow so we've had actual staff members oh, here see. before we, we before we launched on Saturday painting all of that constructing those boxes to make sure that the railway is protected and, and also some of the critical infrastructure yeah. on the track that's uh, what the yeah that well. box is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've got a question for you guys i can see already you can always hear water can't you always mm -hmm. hear water when you're at this station yeah but i'm actually for the first time i've noticed there is actually what is effectively a little concrete string what is that water well, and where's it coming from? You get well, groundwater ground water flowing water. in, you know, as in any station you get that influx of groundwater yep. through seepage from the, the tunnels. And we're in brick, as I said earlier, so you know, you're going to get a bit more of that than you might do with a well-built cast iron tunnel. You notice it's flowing down towards the river here, so yep. that's groundwater from around us. Yep. But equally, you have that issue of seepage in from the tunnel, and there's a virtually limitless supply of water waiting to get in. Yep. Above, isn't Absolutely. There? But you'll hear it at Wapping. There'll be a lovely flushing sound, which is to them much to the delight of. All be glad we had that coffee have before week. coming <laughs> right, let's do this. Let's do this it. Is, this is so kind of cool but exciting and scary at the same time, isn't it? So this is the this is the stuff which has taxed Laura and Siddy uh, in order to get to be able to do this, isn't it? The, yeah. All well, of the practicalities of what you London have to do to be able to. Our buddies have been exceptional. Um, a collaboration made in heaven. Uh, <laughs> it's worked really, really well. Um, and I forget that you haven't been on the overnights with us, so this is your first, this is number first one. thing. And uh, uh, well, you, this is what it's all about. And the nice thing is, down there, you're only getting, I mean, you can see down the tunnels, but you're only getting the first sort of glimpse. It's not until you get right down there that you're going to start to see some of the magic. I don't know if you can capture that yeah. city, but you've got laser targets glowing away down there. But you can understand, can't you, the, the fascination of this tunnel. When you think about it, this was a walking tunnel when it first opened. It was, it was designed for horses and carts, so it was high. You just look at it, it's like a boulevard. Yeah, it's pedestrian. It's, it's going back to that theme of connectivity, isn't it? Yeah. Like connecting the, the north and south banks of the Thames and people, I mean, you just want to kind of Shut your eyes, drink in the moment. I go to like mosaics and marble and fancy dresses. I'm sure there's another side to the tunnel as well. Yeah. Um, when you think but about this, 1843, mm. you know, it's only what, 1829 was your first horse bus yeah. in the capital? And here we are, first tunnel. Uh, it's just 1843. So many people will have walked through here. Absolutely. So and over so many years. Yeah. 
And as Steve said before, this, is bit, this was the pioneer, wasn't it, of all underground tunnels. This was the one. Yeah, I mean, of course. I, well, if this didn't exist, then the tube might not have been built the way it is. No. I mean, this proved a concept. First tunnel under a river anywhere in the world. But it wasn't easily obtained. A lot of people died building this, yeah. and it took them 16 years to build it. You know, when you think about how quickly we can tunnel today, or even when the tube was built. Yeah, I mean, they were digging this at a rate of, what was it, 0.3 of a metre a day? Yeah. yeah. When, when it was, when it was working, well. <laughs> when it was working, when they weren't just being covered in Flooded. sewage. Yeah. Should we get down there to that first <laughs> shaft then? And let's uh, go to the banqueting hall. Yeah. Whoop. Nice. It's bright yellow <laughs> and I still caught it. Right? Do you know what that is? Well, Alex, what do you think that might be? Those well, little, those little bits. Are they place markers for trains for signalling? I mean, no. What is it? So this used to be a part of the London Underground, and what are we seeing here? Three Wh rails. What should be of where four. I am? So these are where the third rail used to sit. The, the fourth rail, the negative rail. So the rail. fourth rail, yeah, the middle rail. Yep. So they've just left them in. Well, they've covered them over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. So we are now stood in uh, the one of the original shafts. Oh, torch is out. Yeah, got to get the big torch out. And you can see it's got a modern day concrete beams up there, reinforced beams, and a modern gantry. But that shaft is one of the two original uh, dug shafts that were made to access building we, these we tunnels. we did earlier. Yeah, Th that's, that's right. with the sand. Yeah, right. And what is sat on top of that is the Brunel Museum. Mm -hmm. So very appropriately. Yes. Uh, and from street level, we see a rotunda, don't we? That's a right. round yeah. building, don't yeah. we? So and that the is the house. top of the original shaft. So there's one here yeah. and one at the other end. Yeah. Yeah. And it's big, isn't it? It's mm. huge. Just just doing that was was quite a major undertaking. Yeah. Uh, What's TL one six five? Oh, well, it's a location marker of some sort, which will be relating to the asset that this is. So, won't it? Oh, yes, it's exactly it. I'm just trying to puzzle it out, because often you get um, things like bridges. Mm. You'll have MR for Metropolitan Railway. Yeah, or WL. Uh, Thames, or, yeah. I, I was just trying to work out what Thames, the L, L could be uh, for. Um, Interesting. That's a definite... Thames line. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> so I think it would be nice to uh, take a walk over onto that tunnel yep. on Lovely. the, uh, the left-hand side. Lovely. And as we uh, are doing for the tours yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So we, we are basically recreating what uh, a very small number of the public are, uh, are doing today and yesterday. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah? We, we've, we've tried to make it as accessible as possible to get as many people down here because it is such an unusual, rare kind of occurrence for the blockade to happen. So obviously that was from Friday night to Monday morning. So we've tried to be here as early as possible, Saturday to Saturday. Sid was here all day. She pulled an epic shift back again this morning and then all day today as well. But we have to cut the Sundays slightly shorter to give us enough time, I say us, the entire crew, enough time to get the line back up and running for uh, Monday morning. Because obviously any issues, any kind of, you know, yeah. what might be small but takes hours to, to kind of, you know, uh, compensate for is going to have a knock-on effect and we cannot be up and running for the public on Monday morning. Right. We never get to do it again. No, no. we it's would not be in favour. We well, can you imagine if there was an, any cool issue stuff. and it delayed the start of the overground on Monday morning? Can't happen. <laughs> that might not. be upsetting, might it's, it? Uh, it's not going <laughs> to happen. But it's amazing how, how long it takes for the, um, you know, the construction to be built for the bridges and the steps and uh, all the way down the track, like, you know, it's, it's all hands on deck and um, lots, of, lots of time. Well, I love it. It's, I love it so far. Mm. It's got to be said, we get to do some very cool stuff. Oh, God. And it's worth getting up in the dark on a Sunday. And we like taking you with us. Now, we're going to go down there, are we? We mm -hmm. are. Marvellous. Siddles, right. you've done this before. Lead now, Siddy is our, well, uh, Siddy has done all of the, the research and the, is the expert, expert, expert guide on this. Uh -huh. He's written that so. narrative script. So what we should go, go, let's go into the tunnel a little bit because here's the only part where you can actually see the original brick as built by Mark and Isambard Brunel. 
So the first overnight visit that I did here, I had the uh, lucky wow. opportunity of having Siddy be my personal tour guide. Because <laughs> we were walking along here, it was about 2 a.m., it was quite cold, and um, we were talking all things operations, which side of the tunnel we're going to walk down, what time, length of tour we're going to do, how many people, all that kind of stuff. And Siddy was like, Lord, just this, this is amazing. This is like the first underwater tunnel. And then I just fed off all her enthusiasm. So I was like, do you know what? I'll let the operations just, just park that for a second and just marvel in the wonder that this is. The civil engineering masterpiece. It's stunning. So the reason I wanted to stop here is because this is pretty much the only place where you can see the original structure. So do you notice down there, it's still a really interesting, unique vista, but it's different from what's here. That's because in the 90s, it was aligned by concrete. This oh, is all yeah. original brick from 1843. I mean, it could be even earlier than that. Of course, they started construction in 1825. And uh, isn't it interesting to think that when they started this construction, they sunk that shaft and they started you know, digging it out. And of course, it was the first time they used a tunneling shield, which worked great. But it wasn't waterproof. Oh my and goodness. The Thames in 1825 was the world's largest open air sewer. Yeah. So basically, raw sewage seeping in. Everyone thing. got sick. Um, so sick, in fact, that many had to be taken off the work site. And then, of course, also loads of gases coming into the tunnel as well, light igniting the gas lamps. So basically, methane just seeping through it, so it would have smelt like. Yeah. yeah, that. Tens, ten, so many issues tens tummy. Yeah. Yeah, in, <laughs> in early years. Oh, it would have been the, rough. The thing is, though, this was the first time that shield had been created. So, although it was primitive, it wasn't brilliant, it certainly wasn't waterproof, and that's why you had the sewage leaking in. It did provide some protection, and over the course of the building of this tunnel, they modified it, didn't perfect it, but they did modify it to make it good enough and just safe enough to get mm. through. And all from that original inspiration of a shipworm burrowing yeah. through timbers on a ship came that idea of creating that protective shell to work inside. Uh, they're kind of gross when you see them. Yeah, uh, they sound but, gross. Uh, but <laughs> they were the inspiration Behind for doing this. this. But and also, so what's interesting is, so you notice the shape of the tunnel is different from yeah. what we're used to. It's kind of oval, right? It's like a horseshoe almost. Yeah, <laughs> yes. so that's because like that. the, the first tunneling shield wasn't round. It was a rectangle, oh. which is counterintuitive because actually it doesn't hold the load as well as a, as a circle does. No. But if you want to know more about the fascinating world of tunnelling, good news, go to our Digging Deeper gallery <laughs> in the museum in Covent Garden That's and the one. you can see, uh, see the diagram of that shield and understand the history of how it came to be perfected. Mm. Yep. But I love, I, I love all you, the little detail. When I was doing a bit of reading on this as well, you notice that the thing that sunk down, you were talking about it earlier, uh, by the river, as it sunk down, it used to get stuck. So they decided in later versions of these kind of sinky things, they would make them more like a cone mm. so that they wouldn't stick. Yeah. And simple stuff like that, you think so many years ago, we'd, we'd get a computer to make that decision now, mm. but way back when, it was a trial and error situation. They just had to try and make it work. It's, it's one of the things which I love about the process of uh, coming up with these ideas. It's truly iterative. And we see it today you know, with companies like SpaceX where the, you know, they build rockets, they'll try it, doesn't work, they'll modify it. Uh, and move on quite rapidly. And all of this was going on during this period in the world of tunneling. Try it, break it, mm. doesn't work, have another go. Yeah. And it's that spirit of invention which I, I really admire and find fascinating. Yeah. Now, I think it's, uh, we should walk down and yeah. have a look at whopping, but one of the things that somebody pointed out to me yesterday is we talk a lot about the Victorians and their infrastructure and how important that is. This is probably the only part we can walk through, which is also Georgian. Ooh. Georgian, mm. yeah. Good point. Yeah. It's quite funny that we talk about children's names these days. But you might say something, why did you call your daughter Chardonnay? But you imagine <laughs> all those years ago, Mark calls his son Isambard. Yeah. Middle name. But that's his middle name. 
you oh, know, Kingdom was his wife's surname. Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Yeah. You know, it's quite a, quite a swanky name, really, for a dinner yeah. party, isn't it? <laughs> well, Mark Brunel was called Mark Isambard Brunel, and he preferred to be called Isambard, but people call him Mark so they don't confuse him with his son. I love it. I love it. It's so complicated. Well, one, of the, uh, one of the things which uh, you really have to come on a visit to experience is the atmosphere down yeah. here. We can give the audience so much, but you can't really capture the essence. And uh, Laura, could I, could I get a tooting, please? <gasps> Do it. Tooting! Epic, right? I hope no hands <laughs> like to, he Ooh. to help us. And that's a fun little yeah. thing just to see. 140 metres to rather high, 300 metres to whopping from this point onwards. And is this what you meant? Do you remember in a previous episode of The Hangouts, you said to me, Stand there and take it in. Is drink, this what you mean? Drink it here? in. Here. Absolutely. Because we're, I mean, we're kind of, yeah, part way down. What well, we've been talking about the archways, we've been talking about like uh, horse and carriages, pedestrianised, and then the kind of trains. City so just talks about the stonework and the brickwork and how it changes. It's so easy to be so kind of overwhelmed with it all that, you know, you kind of don't take that moment to stop, breathe, drink it in before you move on. And obviously we're really lucky because we're, we're in here solo, you know, by ourselves at the moment. You know, when you've got groups of people kind of walking through, it's even more important when you're within that group just to take that moment for yourself, yeah. yeah. And just think about all the kiosks in, you know, the shops in these yeah. archways, yeah. things being sold, people having conversations, meeting family, promenading, mm. you know, all those different things that happen down here. It they described stuff as remembrances, didn't they? They, yeah. they, 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 they said, it if was you souvenirs. Want to down, souvenirs, yeah. yes. What a great word, remembrances. We yeah. never use that word anymore. Well, you could get a Thames Tunnel snuff box, Thames Tunnel gin, Thames Fridge Tunnel. Fridge magnet, no. It yeah. was a huge tourist attraction. What I love is, you kind of think of that as being a modern thing. I guess it's the vanity of modern day society. <laughs> think, oh yeah, we kind of do all of that yeah. sort of tat shop kind of <laughs> souvenirage, but actually, boom, invented a long time ago and alive mm. and well down here. But of uh, course, I mean, they never had, they, this was originally supposed to be a structure for freight, really, for yeah. works, and then they never put a ramp in for a horse to get down it. So it was never actually used by anything but yeah. people. Yeah. And the it was kind of like, the yeah. other thing which I found fascinating says when you were first uh, telling me about the sort of the vendors in these arches yeah. and that you could get coffee yeah. down here. It's like, well, hang on, this is eighteen forty three, so that wasn't electrically powered. That's people with an open brazier, presumably. Yeah. You know, pouring out smoke, you've got your cigar sellers, you know, <laughs> all of that going on. It must have been quite a heady slice of life down there. Also a time when people did not bathe as much as we did. No, yeah. weren't that clean. And it also, the, the whole mood of the place changed. It wasn't always positive and shocking. No. Actually no. it became quite murky. Let's Sandy. have a little down. Yeah, yeah. Further down. <laughs> what's, like, what's your kind of mood at the moment, Alex? How are you feeling? What would be your kind of... Deeply frustrated with life. Oh, is that what you mean? <laughs> um, it was so within the tunnel in this moment. I have to pinch myself when we do these trips because only this week we spent time walking across Camden Junction and looking at the platforms of a, of a station that was closed in 1924. Today's Sunday. I'm thinking, shall I have roast beef or chicken for dinner? <laughs> and what I'm actually doing is looking around this tunnel thinking, this is so old and so pioneering. If it weren't for something like this, we probably wouldn't have the whole underground. Yep. Yeah. And you have to think about the fundamentals of it. I'm absolutely, my mind's blown. And what is really cool about this, and I don't know whether this is a sensible de sort of description, but I love the fact that this tunnel's been effectively shrink wrapped with waterproofing. Hmm. Because that way you get to see all the undulations of the tunnel without it leaking which just kind of makes it sensible. Oh, it was a big thing, um, how this happened, but should we talk about that at Whopping? Let's. It so we're not quite at the halfway point yet, but we are getting there, and that, that gradient is quite significant, Hang isn't on, it? I'm in the way. <laughs> Let me uh, stop. Uh, and you can see, probably just about on the camera, how much it's going back up. You can see the light at the end at of the, the far end. <laughs> You really so can. What do those numbers mean, Nixie, on there? It's just the gradient. It's the, um, so it's a, a one in 34 uh, down from, uh, down from Rotherhithe 
uh, and then it's it's pulling out to a one in eighty. Yeah. So which is quite shallow. But the yeah. one in thirty fours. That's pretty steep. One yeah. down, thirty four along, and one down, one hundred eighty. That's right. That yeah. That's how you get the, the gradients. It, it, it might not sound like a lot, but for a railway, it is quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you remember King William Street. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you get it's. I think it comes in at a one in thirty six. And then turns uh, into and one of fourteen. Yeah, it goes really crazy, Steve. Yeah, but you can see, I mean, that's, that's a reasonable it's one heck of a gradient. Yeah, that's it's one reasonable. heck of a gradient. I've done a couple of these actually, Nancy. I've been literally <laughs> over your shoulder. Thank you, lovely. Let's well, go to Wapping. Let's go shopping so, in Wapping. So, city. Uh. Um, what's it been like to turn this one into a tour? You know what? It was actually one of the easiest tours I've written. <laughs> you, should, you should make it. No, I mean hard, it was though. really hard. <laughs> I struggled a lot, cried, and you know, and, and fretted. No, it was really easy um, because the story is so extraordinary, and um, it's kind of almost something that, when I was reading about it, feels like it would be in a movie or something. You know what I mean? It's sort of like. It's, un it's almost unreal that, that it all happened in the way that it did. Somebody should make a movie about this, actually. It'd be really good, <laughs> we wouldn't it? We should be in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, somebody should really come down and film this. Somebody should uh, <laughs> call me. Um, anyway, I, I just found it pretty, pretty easy, quote unquote, to write. Um, Was it fun? Yeah. I, yeah. Lo I really love this story. I really love this story. Constructing it, it was fairly straightforward. <laughs> It, Nothing ever is. Probably. What was like your kind of wow moment when you were researching? You were like, are, are you like something you didn't know and, and did find out, or? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Actually, probably the banquets. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the banquets. Yeah. So the banquets. I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So you guys were talking about this earlier. Um, so the resident engineer of the project gets sick in 1826, only a year after they start construction. And the 20-year-old is Embart Kingdom Brunel, the son of Mark, who's this project Alex's is. Alex's favourite name. Yeah. yeah. Chardonnay. Is, uh, it takes over as resident engineer. He was 20 years old, which is absolutely bonkers. So young. Um, and he thinks of uh, this scheme to try and raise funds for the project, because even two years in, they are bleeding cash. Mm. And so he throws an underwater banquet in the tunnel. So they covered the tunnel in red velvet drapes. Ooh. They had damask um, tablecloths, crystalware, silverware. Sounds and, a bit showy to me. And the Goldstream <laughs> guards I'm playing. <laughs> and, uh, We've got to say, by the way, this is subterranean rather than underwater. I mean, imagine Frogman. You know, and a piece of meat floating around. I mean, yeah. we are talking. This was. It wasn't a flooded tunnel. Was no, it? no, this no. Was, this was a. <laughs> she just yes, it was it was underwater. <laughs> underwater. Blah blah blah. Could someone grab that roast potato, like a fish please? Tank. It's like. Um, think, yeah, but it's uh, that was one of my favourite ones, nice. and the fact that they uh, recreated that in the nineties. Yeah. Um, I'm very jealous of. It's, I uh, think yeah, no, in, two, in 2020, <laughs> but wait, let's see, so that happened 2027. in 2027, 2027, yeah. 200 years later, I think we should lobby to have a dinner I, down I, here. I, How I good would that be? It's too hard to lobby. I think there's going to be quite a lot I'll of appetite get, for that. We'll, we'll get so, Gary, who was here with us yesterday. Gary, come on, we should do that. <laughs> so I think one of the things about this is it's the reason it's a good tour, and um, probably one of the easy, reasons it was easier to write, <laughs> is that there's just so much good yeah. gossipy story about yes. it. And you know, th this is a story that I first heard when I was uh, at university, and I was, you know, as a science student. And so the technical explanation of how this uh, this tunnel was achieved. Mm. Was you know very interesting. Yep. The thing which immediately struck me though was uh, our professor talking about it, with all of the juicy personal stories in it. So for a very very long time, I've uh, I've wanted to come down here just because of the the great stories. About mm. It is rich with personality, isn't it? it? Is. Which is an absolute gift. But also, I remember when I first heard of this tunnel, I, I think I slightly confused it with the Thames subway which is uh, a different tunnel, which opened later, and actually is not open to the public. It's now, I think it's a Thames water tunnel or a cable tunnel or something like tunnel, that. Yeah. yeah. And I got it confused with that. And so when people were talking about 
walking through it, I was like, what do you mean? I, I couldn't wrap my head around it. This is, ye this is years ago. Sorry, and then I when I was, um, and now if I think about it, isn't it immense that this structure that is 180 years old is still being used every day and there yeah. just trains going through it? And the, it's I, just I shows the fact, the engineering, fine. yeah. The fact that you've got so many of these tunneling oh. firsts happening right. in London is because the Thames is such a huge barrier. Yeah. You know, it's a barrier to commerce, it's a barrier to people being able to commute and live in one place, work in another. And so, you know, whether it's a bridge or whether it's a tunnel, there's a real incentive in cities like London to advance the technology of tunneling to mm. overcome that. Well, it's quite a daring thing to do because yeah. didn't Brunel try to convince another country to have a tunnel and they went, no, 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 it's all right, we'll have a bridge instead. This happened at, in, in, I think it was in Russia and um, Brunel wanted to convince them that this idea of tunneling was a really cool idea and it's very, very safe, totally safe. But actually, what they said was, we're not sure about this, we're going to have a bridge instead. So it was then back to, well, we need to refine this and try it somewhere else. And then London comes along and goes, yeah, go on then, give it a go. Why not? So, uh, we arrive at the sound that uh, you prepared us for what, earlier, what, what uh, which is... It will uh, have a flush in a yeah, moment. Yeah, um, which is apparently a bottle sump, yep. according to that sign. Okay, a bottle sump. Mm. Okay. It's going shaped like a bottle. Yeah. And it's down there. So this flushes every few minutes. It's quite... Oh, yeah, it's about to flush. Oh, Because you on. can really hear let's, the rush. Let's listen. Excuse you. I what love that slice? you both went. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I really hope the microphones pick that up. Alex, <laughs> just, just turn same. around and look up. Isn't that brickwork amazing? It's He's everything. more confused right. about right. the water. There's so much going on. <laughs> you notice I've been quite quiet. I'm just soaking it up. Yeah, and just standing here. You literally look straight down, and mm. it's. It's an assault on the senses in some ways, this isn't it? Is, this is the original Brent Cross shopping centre. I just can't <laughs> get Brent over the, the amount of history and the amount of um, cultural, social history. Yeah. I mean, Laura, you must literally be in your element. This is your thing, It's right? just divine. It's absolutely divine. I love everything about it. And to be fair, when we first had the opportunity uh, to come down here, I think Hidden London were especially excited about this one. Yeah. Um, it's, oh, it's just so rare, isn't it? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, I think this justifies an on-camera selfie. Come Ooh. on. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. it. Let's do it. Let's get let's the get flush. Yep. I, I was going to say, let me just get the flush in. Well, let's do one for Insta. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was that not for Insta? Well, you could go portrait, right? Yeah. That was a cool shot. Mm. <laughs> so, now, um, the reason I was going to say, the reason why that flushing sound is and why there's so much water down here, partially it's coming from groundwater around us, but that cladding that you were talking about, Alex, yes. is partially the reason why there's such an extraordinary pumping system here. So, in the 90s, they realized that this tunnel was in grave need of maintenance and they decide that they need to fortify it somehow. And the idea is that they're just going to spray it with concrete. They're gonna put up a waterproof membrane, spray it with concrete, close up all those cross Just like an additional layer. And, 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 and just make it into two separate tunnels. Okay. Basically like any other tunnel you'd find on the underground. So brick Completely. up all the little shops. Yeah, and yep. just strip it of all its character. And that was the plan, they were gonna do that. Um, they started advertising for it because of course they had to close uh, the line the for East London line, wasn't it? At yep. the time? Yep. And they had to close the line because Canada Water was being built. Yep. So they start advertising for it. People start getting wind of it. The day for construction starting is the 27th of March, 95, which is a Monday. On the Friday at 3 p.m., London Underground gets word that uh, the Heritage Secretary has just grade two listed the structure. Interesting. And they cannot do <laughs> well what they're done. intending That's to do. Timing. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, what they came up with is this is a 200 millimeter thick concrete lining around the um, 
the tunnel, which is hollow, and therefore the water leaking inside it is all being gathered and then pumped out. Yeah. So it's wet. They've done a really nice job with it. I mean, can you imagine doing all of that fine rendering and detail Oof. work? Uh, especially with you know that amount of water being around. It's right so up it's, your street, really isn't it? Really impressive. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? You like I've, a done, I've done enough <laughs> rendering in my, in your lifetime. my years. So, so we call the, it, would we call it tanking? Uh, yes. If, uh, I think yes. That's an appropriate word to yeah. use. You would if you were doing this in a say a cellar yeah. in a built, damp building, then you would tank, tank it. it. Exactly that. Yeah. Now, if you well one other tanking thing. Tanking it. Oh, darling. <laughs> One other He's thing, a builder. <laughs> one other thing which you won't be getting by watching this. You smell that slightly oily smell? Mm. A little bit like a coal mm. bucket, maybe? It really smells well, like, yeah, that's there. That's because there oh, is... Oh, it was really prominent then. That's it. You just get wafted yeah. it. And it's particularly that end of the tunnel uh, gets um, Ooh, that, yeah. coal coal drop leaching in through it so it is actually a coal deposit that you're uh, can you smell that or is no. that no no but but that's really weird why is it in only in bits why does it just come in bursts it's because there's not much of it around and it's as you as the, the air, air shifts it just brings a waft of it to you it's a bit like you know if you're in clapham south and you get the the smell of Careful. the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the smell of in the yeah. deep shelter you get the smell of what they've used to seal the tunnels. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's a similar sort of thing stuff. to that. Yeah. yeah. So, would in when this is uh, the system's in use, mm. is there just too much air turbulence for members of the public to smell that? Stay standing on the platform. Mm. It, it, the trains will certainly shift it about. Right. Um, so you may get waft of it on this end of the platform, but you certainly get, it, it's strongest it's just really at strong, that end of the but, tunnel. Yeah. I just think stuff like this is so mm. fascinating. This is what I like so the smell of coal. Yes, yeah, mm. lovely. Not allowed anymore, are we? No. Yeah. Smoke zones and it's all wrong, that. isn't it? All the fun's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Global <laughs> warming. Yeah. Chest problems. Yeah. Smog. Yeah, yeah not, not the that. size of the asthma. What, 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 what a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Clean yeah. air acts. Do you shake? Yeah. Right, but so. We spoke earlier about, the, about, you know, obviously this was intended, well, it opened as a pedestrian tunnel and then it turned into the East London line. Yep. It's because by the 1850s, it had received it was starting to be well it fell out of the public's favor yeah and it started to be nicknamed the hades hotel yeah oh, nice dear. all sorts of um activities that one might politely describe as nighttime economy uh, gig <laughs> yeah um mm. starts to take place in there when the night falls uh, and it, it got a, a very bad reputation yeah right. and so it got Dicey, and they decided to sell it to the East London Railway Company in 1865. Um, and so that, actually, yeah. you see there, it's a great image. was the first train going through. And am I right in thinking, because they had horses in mind when they built this thing, they had a very high ceiling, and mm. it meant that you could then run trains through it because there was somewhere for the steam to go, there was somewhere for the chimney to be. It was a simple case of, this is not a tube tunnel. Mm. Yeah. This was a, a big walking yeah. tunnel that we can get a train through. Yeah. Very, That's absolutely tall. fascinating, you know? The whole thing. Yeah. And presumably that is where the other shaft is. Yeah. yeah, we should just pop up and have a look at that because at that end it's been lined where we looked at it at Rotherhithe. But here uh, you'll see a little, in it, it's more original cool. state. Cool, let's do it, let's do it. Mm. This is utterly fascinating. But look how tight these platforms yeah. are. Yeah. They are really, they are really tight. Look at the top hats and canes as well. Yeah. Just there. look at it. I mean, I wonder how many people actually notice this artwork on the walls when they use this line. It's so, to me, this is, this is the cutest of all yeah. the tube lines, really. Yeah, I guess when you're, like, it's a regular station, that you, d you know, you kind of, you kind of don't notice it as much. It just becomes part of the fabric of your journey to, to work or wherever you're going. But Whoop. The, the less really you use it, the more prominent it might be. Well, when yeah. this was the East London line, because I used to do a lot of work in Whitechapel, and, and so I'd be using this line quite a lot, and they used to use the old Metropolitan Line A stock mm. trains, and there was something about the seats that just made you feel a bit top-hatty, because all the seats I were very it. upright, with the, the racks and everything else, and I just felt like it was more of a gentleman's, you know, like old-fashioned gentleman's yeah. railway Look line. Yeah, the like. tailored coat with yeah. the velvet collar and the top hat. It's just lovely. Uh, just and also, great. if you if you happen to have one of the light boxes from an A-stock uh, train, which I, I might do, you might uh, do. then <laughs> you will still find these locations on it if you wind on around the far enough. 
I feel like Chris and um, Alex should be in their moquette bow ties or something. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he's got his moquette scarf on. I know. Like he's trying. Yeah. He's trying. yeah, and what, petticoat? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll wear my petticoat. Right then. All right. To the stairs. And of course, all this is stuff that we can see when we're using this line. None of this is secret or locked off or whatever. And it's funny because throughout the series of In London, we've had all the different types of station. We've had the ones that have closed, the ones that are due to open, and now the ones that are still in use with huge amounts of history that we can just have a look around when the engineering's being done. It's really cool, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Yeah. It's rather nice, isn't oh it? So you've got yeah. these sort of architraves built in. Uh, you can see across to the other side there. And of course, this is largely how it was originally fitted out with stairs, uh, because they'd run out, run out of money to fit the approach ramps for the horses and carts. They could only fit stairs in the shaft, and therefore it's a pedestrian tunnel. Yeah, absolutely. And also, what's interesting, the entrance building, when it opened, was made of marble. So it was this kind of great big circular marble structure that was so out of place in the area because it was quite a rough area, whopping in the docks oh, yeah. and everything around. You know, it was, it, was, it was pretty dicey for people to be around here. And then you just have this giant marble structure where people are like, you know, it's quite tricky to actually get all the way to whopping at the time. There's no public transport taking you there. That seems slightly at odds, doesn't it, with having run out of money? I feel a bit like uh, Stewie or Family Guy. Yeah. Oh, you got money for fake moustaches, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, so they've got enough money for marble fitting, but I the know. approach ramps must have been really They must spending. have bought it at a good <laughs> price some years before. That's what I think. Mm. Well, look, I think we're, uh, we're running out of time in our slot, so we should start making our way back. Mm -hmm. I think we walk back up that tunnel while we yeah. can, because, frankly, we're not going to get the chance again for a very long time, yeah. I suspect. I Let's go and do the other one. It's absolutely fantastic. Mm. Okay. Sunday show and tell. And actually, I really like this look, this, the opening to it here. That's the original structure. Doesn't so that, that was just sort of shrink-wrapped again, was it? Is that how...? Yeah, but it does, it's got like a presence, of, presence to it, doesn't it? It, it does. feels very grand. It does. It, it has to be said, it has the keystone detailing. Mm. I don't know if that was a later addition or whether you know that what? was... On all of the photos, uh, well, the images, of course, there are no photographs yeah. because this was before before the invention of that. Or maybe it wasn't, but they don't have any photographs of it. Um, I think I remember seeing that detail, but yeah. I think you're right from memory. And I've also just noticed a, a, something else which I rather like up here, mm. which is the, <laughs> the sign saying, no access to tunnel while trains are running. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious, but <laughs> thank you for that. Somebody yep. used to say it. Well, thankfully, they're not, so we can. What, I wonder what television channels I can get on that. <laughs> well, you know what that's for, don't you? Radio? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, train radio. Yeah. There's, a, there's a separate kind of radio for this um, line. Right. It's different to the ones that we use on the underground. Is that because this is not strictly underground? Yeah, it has to reach a wider... Yeah. Because the... the it, it's also here, you, because it's essentially a straight line, you can just fire a tight beam down there with the uh, with one of those Yagi antennas. Uh, so I, I'm guessing there's one at the other end to deal with the fact that there's quite it's a good. gradient. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. Fascinating. Let's go down again. Right. Shall we? Right. Okay. Let's head. Mm -hmm. This is just cool. It really is just cool, isn't it? How long will these, uh, Nixie? How long do you think these? Um, seals will last? That's a pretty good question. Um, I guess it depends on the type of uh, sealant they've used. Um, somebody somewhere will have that in their engineering book, yeah. that many things. Uh, but my guess is uh, many decades because you don't want to have to strip that off and start again very often. Because let's face it, there is only going to be a need for more river crossings. Yeah. There's n they're never going to be a situation where we go, we don't really need this anymore. This is, thank goodness, this tunnel has been robustly built and maintained because yeah. it's going to be needed for a long time. Usually things like station boxes are designed with a, a, at least a 100 to a 200 year life expectation. Um, I don't know, given that this is a secondary measure, it might be a 50 year uh, expectancy, but it's doing pretty well, isn't it? I just, I think it's incredible. I'm just thinking I'd like to look like a shopkeeper. 
<laughs> right, what would you sell, Mr. Grundon? Which, which services would you be oh. selling? In oh, there? good evening. Would you like an overground tabard? Actually, yes. <laughs> as a souvenir, comes as a, a, a remembrance <laughs> of your trip. So he's now a tabard merchant. Can, so can you imagine? Can you sell a gin and tonic? Oh, definitely. definitely. Mm. But imagine like a marble countertop. This was the size of your shop. And you could serve. Oh, wow. You could serve from both sides. I just think it's utterly fascinating. Some tea cakes. Little shopkeepers. The, the thing is, if you've got your tabard shop here, what if I take one of the ones back up there and set up a tabard shop as well? I'd you urge you. Nicking, <laughs> nicking all your trade. Nicking, <laughs> nicking all my trade. And, but, and while you're doing that, I'm just going to send uh, you the photograph, Nick, so you can put this on the screen of what I've just seen. And it's literally just the tunnel absolutely barren. Totally barren. I, I think we should sell, in this one, we should sell cockles, and in that one, we should sell a, mussels, and then we should sell alive, alive O's in the last one. Wait, <laughs> cocks, mus cockles, 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 mussels, mussels. Yeah, I think eels. No, and probably eels, yeah. <laughs> I think it's tea and cake. <laughs> Jellied eels. <laughs> Oof, wow. I love it. I and love maybe it. a Actually, Mug yeah. Ale. If it's if it's Mr. Grundon, surely it's a pie shop, isn't it? Pie oh, and masher. Yeah. I mean, look at the size of me these days. <laughs> um, well <laughs> done, Alex. me. Um, utterly lovely, utterly lovely. And thank you, Sid, for doing all the research on this. That's all this right. Is just, um, uh, it's just a gripping trip. No wonder people wanted to get down here, honestly. So that's an awful lot of drainage pipe that we've got yeah. there. <laughs> and uh, shut that's off That's some pipage. <laughs> it really makes you realise though, doesn't it, how much prep has been done to mm. this place to make it possible. I mean, even spotting these, I presume these have been knocked up just for the purposes that, of... That's the right. The tour, yeah. These are here just for this event, this weekend, uh, and will be gone again uh, in time to, to service. Well, tonight. Tomorrow. Yeah. tonight. Yeah. They'll be gone tonight. Tonight. Right, no. we're halfway. Well, of course, the actually, yeah, we're, I would say we're almost exactly halfway. Halfway. Yeah. And we should say why we're wearing gloves because obviously down here it's by a river. There are certain little fairy animals, and they carry mm. nasty bugs. So yeah. we have to make sure that there's no food, no drink, no touching of your face, and make sure that you just keep your gloves on. And that's the thing, is we've never seen any down here, but we have to presume that they are around. Mixie, oh. why is it that... Um, the, the, the power rail here is surrounded yeah. by wooden battens. Yeah, so you box in rails like that, usually when there's a chance that a member of staff may brush against it. So right. you sometimes see that in depots uh, where there's a walkway next to it. The only thing I can think is that just down there, there's a little platform for a uh, train stuff, yeah. tunnel uh, telephone. Uh, so it's possible that this is a section that is more likely to have people come down and do an inspection, maybe to look at that signal. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I suspect it's that. It's is in the uh, BR as well on the... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great, isn't it? This uh, network rail. Still use British <laughs> rail. <laughs> I saw 1987 or something, yeah, something yeah. at some point. Anyway. So, we're very nearly at the end of the return journey now. Mm -hmm. And we're just breaking out into the, uh, the wide part of the tunnel at the base of the shaft again. Um, but there's something that you're just walking past here, which oh. I got asked oh. about <laughs> by the manager uh, for the line when uh, we came to do our first recce. And he said, Chris, I've always wondered about this. We've got no idea what it is. Could you try and work it out for me? Now, Alex, I don't think I've talked to you about this one. Is it hot? Is it an immersion heater? <laughs> it does look a bit no. like that. Because people who've looked at it were like, well, it kind of looks almost like a piece of unexploded ordnance. Like a torpedo yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it wouldn't, an unexploded piece of ordnance wouldn't have been propped into a carefully channeled out space right. in the tunnel. Um, and when I first looked at it on a photo, I didn't know how big it was. But I was trying to fathom it out and thinking, it looks like an accumulator, pressure accumulator of some sort to me. And I thought, hmm, I wonder where it is exactly in the tunnel. And if I just go that way. Mm. See, we're quite close to the entrance to the tunnel here. Yep. 
And that is the clue as to what we think it is. Location, Any thoughts, location, Alex? Is, is, it, is it like... Would it drop over? Would something drop over it to steady the position of the tunnel or something? Is no. it like a... No? It's related to well, something you've seen recently at another station we haven't filmed at. That has been hacked oh. into but a tunnel. Pieces of the jigsaw <laughs> together. When you get stuff hacked into a tunnel, yeah. and it looks like it's been done in a hasty and slightly less oh, planned oh, fashion, is it a you flood start gate? thinking yeah. wartime, don't is it you? Flood gate? Well done. There you go. So come and have so a look. How does that work then? It's, well, a, it's hydraulic pressure. So, give us that again. What was that? It, it's hydraulic pressure. It's hydraulic, isn't it, Chris? That's or right. Is it atmospheric? So, no. we think it's a hydraulic accumulator, yeah. and you can see where those steel beams were fitted for a floodgate. Yeah. And it did have floodgates, we know that. Because um, it got hit. With, with floodgates, they're either electrically powered or hydraulically powered. And. Um, if you look at how this tunnel is set up, there's not a lot of space here to put equipment. No. Because you've already got your pipe work yeah. and stuff. Um, so putting an accumulator back there would make sense. So, so that's what we think it is. Just because I'm being thick, talk me through how a floodgate here would work. Uh, well, We've given the warning, they're told shut the floodgates, what happens? That's right. So um, many floodgates. Uh, that we've seen fitted on the underground, they'll create a space to the side of the tunnel yep. and you would have the floodgates slide across to cover the tunnel. Here, where you've got the space is above it because you've got this unusual shaft above the tunnel. It so down. it looks like it's been made to drop down, a bit like, uh, you know, the one that we it's saw, the Sloan Square and, yeah. The entrance uh, to a castle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, it's a portcullis without the holes. <laughs> Game of Thrones. That's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> I mean, it's huge up there. Actually. Yeah, it is. It's pretty what vast. Oh, well done, detectives. That's amazing. So that's the thing that makes sense, anyway. So the guillotine door. <laughs> the Chops Indiana right Jones. <laughs> it's been pretty cool, yeah. actually. Yeah. Can you imagine if there was like a ball rolling down in there? It'd be a bit kind of scary, wouldn't it? Like Christmas Day films on BBC One. Yes, maybe if it was a papier mache one made to look like rock. Absolutely. Go with that. Right. So there we go. I think tours are about to start, guys. Yeah. So let's head on out. Okay, well, well look, guys. That was beautiful. Come and, come and stand near me. <laughs> By the I know my tabard says go, but cool. you can. Um, that was really cool. Well done for doing all the research Thanks. on that, because that is proper cool, I mean, cool study. It is a place like no other in the entire world. It's completely unique, and without it, and who knows how rapidly or not rapidly the how things would have been built. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think you've both done an amazing job to make this happen in, in the time. Well, to be well. fair, we also had an incredible team. The Hidden London team has been amazing. The, the guides team. have been yeah. incredible. The Overground team, I mean, Raj, Christopher, Gary, everyone's been so helpful. So, I mean, what a team effort. Massive team effort. But we'll, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be mega sad not to have like 40 meetings every <laughs> well, week. Well, I was going to say, all I can say is, as, as probably out of the four of us, I'm the only one who's like a member of the public, if you yeah. like, going down there. And this On is my this first occasion. experience. And, and whilst we hope that this video allows you to feel like you've shared the experience, I can genuinely say, hands on heart, there is nothing like being down here. And if you ever get the opportunity again, and I don't know whether you will, but if you ever get the opportunity again, come on this tour because this is yeah. it feels like you're you're going so far back in history it's not like any of the other places we've worked mm. it's this is quite something else mm -hmm. and huge thanks to the Everground team for p reaching Making out to us to partner up to, yeah. to pull this off because we know there are so many people who want to share this experience uh, for themselves so thank you well hopefully be it's been a big success we've got one more day to go but but yesterday was great so hopefully if the opportunity presents itself next year or in the coming years we'll be able to do these again absolutely fantastic well listen uh, we're going to go off and get a cup of tea take these ridiculous gloves off maybe put some woolly ones on instead so thank you for watching as always like subscribe and comment down below on the youtube 
Find us on Instagram, Alex Grunton, Chris Nick, City Holloway, Hidden London Law, and at LT Museum, and we'll be somewhere really cool very, very soon indeed. In the meantime, have yourselves a great day and stay safe. It has to be said, this has been really cool in every way. Yeah, <laughs> my hands freezing. are freezing. I'm busting for a wee now. <laughs> busting. I know. <laughs>